Letting yourself age gracefully is far more beautiful than plastic surgery. Here's proof. Madonna at 64. My mum at 64. Your mom's single? No, lol. This is a great advertisement for dating and marrying Leia. Your mom is gorgeous. Madonna looks like garbage. Good genes. Your mom is so hot. She is. Lol. Madonna addresses hateful comments about her face, calling them the glare of ageism and misogyny. All hail the fearless and funny Jennifer Coolidge and the glorious art of not giving a damn. The MILF is back. Are you ready? Cher and Alexander A.E. Edwards are not talking marriage, but are very much in love, says a source. Hear me out. I think the reason, more than anything, why people think that Madonna's face is ugly is because she is not a MILF. That is it. End of discussion. And by Madonna not being a MILF, she is not conforming to the typical tenets and standard of what a MILF is. Namely, a mother I'd like to get down and dirty with. And you could say, okay, but what about Cher? People would be saying the exact same thing about Cher. I mean, she's had just as much plastic surgery, if not more. But the important thing with Cher is that she has proved that she can get a younger man to in fact get down and dirty with her. With the rise of MILFs, we have a real opportunity to value women for more than their looks. We have a real opportunity to expand our social value beyond our childbearing years. Of course, I'm just kidding. We're humans. <laughs> So a brief history lesson. The idea of MILF emerged in the 1990s. It's not necessarily sure exactly where it originated from, but it was seen online during this time. A MILF is an older woman who has typically had children, thus confirming that she was once fertile and that she successfully bore children. But more importantly, it proves and confirms that she is sexually experienced. Yet even more importantly than that, the MILF is sexually attractive. That is her key feature. She is older, but contrary to all the stereotypes and inevitabilities of the aging process, she has retained that one thing so essential to being a woman. Ultimately, the most important, if not the singular important thing about being a woman, youth. The term gained mainstream prominence after Jennifer Coolidge's performance in American Pie, and she is, in a way, responsible for the resurgence of MILF. Based on my own internet sleuthing, MILF became quite prominent or big in in the adult content world in around 2005 to 2007. It is now a relatively popular genre and has its own award, the X-rated critics organization's MILF of the Year Award. Some actresses began making this genre of adult content from age 25. Considering that adult content is focused and fixated on the barely legal, it is no wonder that MILFs are considered women age 25 upwards. I am happy to be part of this new demographic, said a then 48-year-old Nina Hartley in 2007. I have the opportunity to show that older women are sexy and we are not giving up on our sex lives. And this is the interesting thing about MILF that I would like to speak about. I think the very peculiar badge of honor that the acronym MILF holds can be seen in the public reaction and outcry to the TLC show MILF Manor. <laughs> There are hundreds of thousands of videos on YouTube about MILF Manor, as well as clips from the actual reality show itself. So I will just give you the tagline if you are not familiar. 25 super hot moms, 50 eighth grade boys, no rules. I think we can consider the idea of MILF before, as well as the idea of MILF post MILF Manor. The pre-MILF Manor MILF, this is going to be very confusing, bear with me here, was sexy but also powerful. She was represented primarily by Jennifer Coolidge and I would also say by Cat Blanchett. I would also say that in some spheres it included the primary protagonists in American Horror Story, Angela Bassett, the likes of Sarah Paulin, Demi Moore, Eva Longoria, the entire cast of Sex and the City, and importantly Madonna. Prior to, well, a week ago. J-Lo, Kylie Minogue. What you will notice about all these MILFs is that it is, well, obviously all about how they look. However, the way that these women are presented, the way they exude their femininity and their aura is very in line with a kind of individuality, with a kind of power, this idea of female empowerment. And because they are older, this power is far more noticeable. I think it has something in a weird sort of indirect 
indirect way to do with the idea of respecting your elders. In a lot of culture, a woman, a married woman at least, who is no longer of childbearing years, who is the matriarch of a household and a family or a community, is looked up to. She's seen as the beacon, as the lifeline of the family or the community. She is honored and respected, but typically she doesn't have much sexual value. So in a way, the MILF is sort of a marriage of the two, of the young and the old, the good and the good from both being a young woman and an older woman. It's the best of both worlds, especially when it gets reduced to well, the voyeur or men. Because in actuality, the MILF is just about men and voyeurs. And I say voyeurs because, well, for instance, Cat Blanchett is a MILF icon to not just men, but to lesbians and the queer community. The MILF isn't about the autonomy of woman or a revitalization of an older woman's sexuality in her own light. It's all about being an object, an object of desire, and one that has typically been taboo. To be a MILF now, is to be sexy. It has nothing to do with power or talent or your worth as an individual. It is reduced to sex insofar as youthfulness is concerned. You are to look as fertile and vivacious as possible. Hence, the mothers or the MILFs are the MILF manner. And in actual fact, it is about how successfully you go under the knife. According to current public perception, Madonna did not go successfully under the knife. Hence why she is not considered, at least not right now, a MILF. Based on what we can see of MILFs, the modern MILF has two options at her disposal. She either has to go under the knife for the rest of her aging years, is, or she has to somehow keep youthfulness in her sphere of orbit by having a young thing on her arm at all times. 76-year-old Sher is in a relationship with 35-year-old Alexander A.E. McQueen. Am I, am I <laughs> not McQueen? I'm so sorry. 76-year-old Cher is in a relationship with 35-year-old Alexander Edwards. They are very much in love, a source tells people of the pair, noting that the two were inseparable at a pre-Grammys party over the weekend. They held hands all night and were very lovey-dovey and kissing often. They're not talking about marriage or anything like that, but they are exclusive and serious. And you know what? Good for them. I am not here to judge anybody's relationship, provided that it is among adults. But I do think that the rise of MILF is a very interesting conversation to have. I think it's a very good example of how dismally society treats older women. We like to accuse especially young women of being vain, conceited, self-absorbed, etc. But our treatment of older women is abhorrent. Aging gracefully is one thing if it happens naturally for you, if you are fortunate, I suppose, or it comes with an acceptance that you are going to be virtually invisible to society. Madonna is a good example of the intense scrutiny of the female's aging process. At the moment, especially in the red pill community and the manosphere, young women are being made to fear being the so-called leftover woman. Just as a footnote, there really is no such thing as a leftover woman. This is complete fabrication and a complete exaggeration. I actually made a collage of so-called leftover women, namely women who decided not to have children or waited too late and realized, oh, I can't have children. These are all famous women, but if you consider them a leftover woman in a negative sense. I really cannot help you. <laughs> Womanhood has a very finite window. You are a woman insofar as you can breed, and culturally, insofar as you at least look like you can breed. This window of opportunity is small, and with our aging population in general, aging women are not seen as a good thing. And because this idea of authentic, true womanhood has such a small window, has such a short lifespan, I think it is no wonder that women are so territorial over being a woman. This is one of the reasons why I think it is no coincidence that older women are the dominant voices of the trans-exclusionary feminist movement. These women are firstly older and socially invisible. In a sense, your womanhood is stripped away from you every year you age and become less and less fertile. And now, on top of all that, the last semblance of you being a woman, namely the biological fact that you are a female and the universal history of you emerging 
changing from girlhood into womanhood is seemingly under threat or attack. And I think another reason why as women we are afraid to age is because there is really little, at least social, information about it. There's very little in the way of information about menopause, about how our bodies change, about how our sexuality changes. It does. There is little way in understanding what value we have to society, to men as a generic group, to attractiveness in and of itself as older women. And I think rather than having these conversations honestly and openly, we have instead done the typical human thing of reducing everything down to sex, down to the male gaze. Hence the proliferation of cosmetic procedures and plastic surgery means that we never have to have a conversation about what it means to to be an actual older woman. Because I think when it comes to the actual female anatomy and body, especially as us as women age and our bodies change immensely, at the minute it is just a dark secret. It is something that is not considered with regards to our work-life balance. When it comes to menopause, society including, and I would say especially men, are ignorant of its implications and how best to support women through it. Women are expected to go through it stoically and maybe I'm being a bit too optimistic in thinking that the rise of MILF may bring this into the conversation. Who knows? Maybe that is a bit too hopeful, huh? <laughs> I was actually having a coffee with one such friend and she was incredibly assertive in getting us a table and ensuring that everything was the way that she wanted it. And I said to her, I wish I had your kind of confidence because that was bloody brilliant. And she told me that at some point in her life of aging, she had an epiphany, which another friend of mine, an older female friend, also relayed in similar terms to me, that at a certain point, they have an epiphany that they are suddenly invisible to society, that they are invisible, especially to men, and that now, importantly, they have to cultivate and prioritize themselves and their personal relationships, the things that are actually important. They establish and prioritize private meaning and rituals and skills, private things, private relationships that have nothing to do with society, that have nothing to do with politics, with social media, media, all of that. Their personalities and character is what is key. Beauty is secondary. The difference for them is that they didn't grow up with cosmetic procedures being within their reach and grasp. These procedures are universally accessible, at least in the modern context. For instance, lip filler, implants, the viral trends that we see on TikTok. Cosmetic procedures are increasingly becoming an expectation, something taken for granted as what a woman ought to just do at some point in her life to either offset the inevitable aging process or to deal with it when she starts to visibly age. And it's really bizarre, although entirely human, to see us as women, for instance Madonna, as being both victims and perpetrators of this vicious cycle. And I think that is also what is so peculiar about the MILF. We glorify her and look at her with awe. She is an exception to the rule of aging, yet she is also an object. She is an object of the male gaze, of the societal gaze of what it means to be a woman. What do you think about the rise of the MILF? Do you think this is a good or positive thing or a more so negative thing? Are you a MILF or do you aspire to be one? I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions down below. Thank you so much for watching this video and thank you as always to my very generous and lovely patrons and I'll see you all very soon in the next one.